Hello class, this is Fire Service Hydraulics and Water Supply, Chapter 10, Types of Fire Streams. After this lesson, you will be able to identify the basic elements of fire stream production. You will also be able to explain the characteristics, advantages, and disadvantages of water-based fire streams and their appropriate fire hose nozzles. I'm going to list all of our learning objectives here, and then we'll start with learning objective one. In this chapter, we will list the four basic elements required to produce an effective fire stream. We will also describe the characteristics of fire streams. In objective three, describe the characteristics of fog streams. And in objective four, describe the characteristics of broken streams. And now we'll start with learning objective one, which is to list the four basic elements required to produce an effective fire stream. To produce an appropriate and effective fire stream requires four basic elements, those being a water supply source, a means to impart sufficient pressure on the water, a means to transport the water from the source to the desired point of application, and fourth, personnel train used in the first three elements effectively. Water, let's talk about water supply. Water for producing or developing fire streams may be taken from an apparatus water tank, a municipal water supply distribution system, or a static supply source. NFPA standard 1901 and standard 1906 both require the fire apparatus to be equipped with fire pumps to carry an onboard water supply. Static supply sources include ponds, lakes, streams, swimming pools, and portable tanks. The most commonly used exterior water supply is the municipal water supply distribution system. A properly designed, constructed, and maintained system should be able to supply all the water needed for normal domestic and fire requirements, plus reserve for heavy demands. The water supply connection, usually a fire hydrant, is an important component in producing fire streams. As far as the apparatus is concerned, a fire department pumper or some other form of apparatus is equipped with a fire pump. So a good supply source may allow the pumper to achieve flows that exceed its rated capacity. In regards to fire equipment, fire equipment that is required to deliver the water from the supply source to the pump and then from the pump to the point of application falls into four basic categories, fire hose, fire nozzles, fire hose appliances, and other related hardware. One of the most important articles of equipment in fire stream production is of course fire hose and serves as the conduit between the water supply source and the pump and the pump and nozzle are of course crucial because they deliver the water stream. They move the water under pressure and deliver it. Fire streams are influenced by fire hose and its resistance to the flow of water because of friction loss. A variety of factors influence the amount of resistance that a hose will offer water moving through it. The diameter of the hose, the length of the hose, and the age and condition of the hose. Improvements in modern hose manufacturing technology have made smoother liner materials and hose diameter expansion when charged with water under pressure. Older fire hoses, if you look at like old films or old newsreels and things like that, you see a lot of leaking from the hose itself. And newer hoses, the hose line is much more snug and secure and there's a lot less friction loss inside the hose. Fire equipment and air hose, fire hose appliances are devices that combine or separate multiple hose lines. And the four principal types are Ys, Siamese's, Water Thiefs, and Manifolds. A fire equipment Y divides one hose line into two separate hose lines of equal size. The two discharges may or may not be equipped with a ball type valve that controls each line. Those that are equipped with valves are referred to as gated Ys. A Siamese connection combines two or more medium diameter hose lines into a single large diameter line. These have two main uses, to connect several supply hoses to one medium diameter supply hose that will be run up an aerial ladder to a detachable ladder pipe, and also to connect several medium diameter supply hoses in order to supply one large diameter hose. A water thief enables firefighters to take three attack lines off the original attack or supply line. It has one intake and then three gated discharges. 
A fire equipment manifold is placed at the end of a large diameter supply line. This enables firefighters to divide the line into smaller lines that can be sent to several locations. This can be used to join several small lines into one large line as well. Other hardware that is related to but does not directly affect the quality of a fire stream includes tools used to make hose and nozzle connections, handle hose lines, and protect hose lines from damage. There is also hardware that is related to but does not directly affect the quality of a fire stream include the tools used to make hose and nozzle connections, handle hose lines, and protect hose lines from damage. You see here like he's got a strap up on his shoulder that helps him support the hose and a hose bridge that helps keep hoses lined up correctly. As far as human ability is concerned, if personnel who are poorly trained or make errors in selecting and using equipment, common mistakes occur such as using a hose that is too small, overtaxing a pumper, using large capacity nozzles that demand a total volume greater than the rated capacity of the pump, or developing excessive nozzle pressure. Some review questions. List three static water supply sources. This will be on page 228 of your manual. Next question. List the four basic categories of fire equipment that is required to deliver water from the supply source to the pump and then from the pump to the point of application. That's on page 228 of your manual. Next question. How does the diameter of a hose affect the friction loss of any given flow? That is on page 229 in your manual. And next question, describe two common mistakes that fire personnel make when trying to produce an effective fire stream. That is on page 232 in your manual. Learning objective two, describe the characteristics of solid streams. The oldest type of fire stream dates back to the very origins of the fire service. It's easiest to produce and requires the simplest type of nozzle. Some characteristics of solid streams. They're produced from a fixed orifice smoothbore nozzle and referred to in situations where a powerful long range high volume stream is desired. They're also used for master streams in defensive firefighting operations and on hand lines for interior direct fire attacks. The characteristics of solid streams are classified as good if they have the following physical characteristics at the point of breakover. First being the stream is not lost continuity by breaking into showers of spray. The steam appears stream, excuse me, appears to shoot nine tenths of the whole volume of water in a circle. So for instance, 15 inches is 375 meters in di millimeters in diameter and three quarters of it inside a 10 inch or 250 millimeter circle would indicate a good solid stiff stream. And then third, the stream is stiff enough to attain the required height and or reach even through a moderate breeze that may be blowing. If a stream appears to be having the desired effect on the fire, then it should be considered a good stream. The flow capacity of a smoothbore solid stream nozzle quadruples when the diameter of the discharge opening is doubled. A given size nozzle will discharge a maximum quantity of water at a definite stream velocity. Increasing the velocity means increasing the discharge pressure from the fire pump. The recommended nozzle pressure for a master stream solid stream nozzle is 80 PSI or 560 kilopascals. The distance a solid fire stream that can project effectively from a nozzle is its reach. Solid streams tend to have the longest reach. A stream can be controlled mechanically only if it leaves only until it leaves the nozzle. After that, it's influenced by a number of factors, including gravity, friction of the air, and wind. The, as far as the reach of a solid stream, this is one example. You've got 50, 50 PSI driven by the piston in the line, and water in the pipe under 50 PSI pressure will raise 115 feet. Suppose we remove the pipe and direct the stream of water straight up into the air. After water leaves the end of pipe or nozzle, the stream holds its shape for some distance and then begins to flare and break into drops. These drops soon lose the momentum and fall to the ground. This process continues until only the water column's inner part reaches the maximum height. 
The friction of the air on the water's outer surface breaks the stream and gravity pulls the drops to the ground. The greater the discharge pressure at the nozzle, the greater the reach of the stream. Given equal discharge pressures, the reach of the stream will increase as the diameter of the discharge orifice is increased. The solid stream's maximum horizontal reach is at an angle of 32 degrees to the Earth's surface. The closer the directed stream's angle is to 70 to 75 degrees, the greater will be its vertical reach into structures. The stream's greatest vertical reach is at 90 degrees from or perpendicular to the Earth's surface. If the reach is not sufficient at 50 psi or 350 kilopascals discharge pressure, firefighters must either move the hose closer to the target or consider using a master stream device. The nozzle tip's diameter can only be increased so far before the quality of the stream is reduced. The stream's theoretical maximum horizontal reach will be achieved at an angle of 32 degrees, but the conditions at the incident scene will dictate the actual angle of discharge. If a breeze is blowing, it will definitely reduce the stream's reach. This is Table 10.1, which is an effective range of solid fire streams in feet to nozzle diameter in inches. So down the left, they've got PSI that's inside the hose, and across the top is the vertical and horizontal distance for different size nozzle diameters. This is Table 10.1b, which is the same exact table but done in metric. The advantages and disadvantages of solid streams. Solid streams allow firefighters greater visibility than other types of streams, and they've always been considered to have greater reach than other types of streams. They can operate at lower nozzle pressures, have greater penetration power, and are less likely to disturb normal thermal layering of heat and gases during interior structural attacks. Some disadvantages are that the nozzles do not allow for different stream pattern selections and cannot be used for Class B foam application. They also provide less heat absorption per gallon or liter. And they will conduct electricity back to the nozzle if they contact an energized electrical source. Some review questions. What type of stream is preferred in situations where a powerful, long-range, high-volume stream is desired? That will be on page 233 of your manual. Next question, what are three factors that influence the reach of a stream once it leaves the nozzle? That is on page 235 of your manual. Learning objective three, describe the characteristics of fog streams. Fog streams are the most flexible of the three types of fire streams. They're not perfect for every situation. A fog stream describes a patterned fire stream composed of many individual drops of water. The water droplets are formed to expose the maximum water surface for heat absorption. Adjustable fog stream nozzles create virtually all types of fog streams and can develop a wide range of stream patterns. A solid stream of water is a solid stream discharged from a smoothbore nozzle. A straight stream is meant to ensure or meant to emulate a solid stream but is discharged from a fog stream nozzle. It's composed of water droplets and contains some intertrained air. The fire service uses a wide variety of types and designs of nozzles to produce fog streams. They are available for both hand lines and master streams and may be of fixed gallonage, adjustable gallonage, gallonage excuse me, or automatic designs. Velocity is the rate of motion of a particle in a specific direction. Speed is the rate of travel regardless of direction. The greater the stream's forward velocity, the more air it will move, the quicker it will vent the area, and the greater the velocity of the water when it leaves the nozzle. The farther it will travel also before gravity pulls it to the earth if it has greater forward velocity. Velocity is one factor that governs the fog stream's reach. When a stream strikes an obstacle, its forward velocity is reduced in proportion to the shape of the obstacles and the angle of impact. Fog streams should divide into an even spray with uniform discharge pattern around their cone, as you see illustrated in this slide here. Fog stream selection must consider five factors to effectively reach the seat of a fire. Gravity, 
water velocity, fire stream pattern, water droplet friction with air, and wind. Because of reduced reach, fog streams are seldom useful for outside defensive firefighting operations. They can become converted to steam in the thermal column above the fire and the water will never reach the seat of the fire itself. Fog streams are most useful for fighting enclosed fires and there are more factors that may hinder a fog stream than a solid stream. Fog streams are most useful for fighting enclosed fires as we said and what the fog stream lacks in reach is made up for by the larger space it occupies and the greater water surface it exposes to the heat. A fog stream is retarded by fire stream pattern and water droplet friction with air, the friction between the outer surface of the fog cone and surrounding air, turbulence within the fog stream itself, and the process of entraining air. The fog stream pattern and water droplet friction with air are interrelated. A wide angle fog stream has little forward velocity and a short reach. A narrower, narrower angle fog pattern will have greater forward velocity and reach. Once a stream with maximum reach is produced, increases in nozzle pressure have little effect upon the stream except to increase the flow volume. A broken stream or unsatisfactory pattern is likely caused by insufficient nozzle pressure. Most standard fog nozzles are designed at discharge nozzle pressure of 100 psi or 700 kilopascals. There are special low pressure nozzles that may be designed for discharge pressures as low as 50 psi or 350 kilopascals. A key factor in fog streams effectiveness in confined spaces is maximizing the ratio of the stream's water surface to the air in the space itself. Both affect the width and reach of the fog stream that will be used, those being the size of the area occupied by fire and the firefighter's ability to safely access that area. If firefighters can get closer to the fire area and use a wider fog pattern, the water surface to air ratio will be greater and the steam conversion will be increased. A very large fire may require one or more fire reaching fog streams to achieve maximum heat absorption. A wide angle stream will reduce the temperature in the immediate area, but will absorb little heat beyond its reach. The displacement of heated gases by wide angle fog streams may assist in extinguishment. Now let's talk about water to surface air ratio. The greater this ratio is, the quicker and more completely water will convert to steam. Achieving a high water to surface air ratio requires creating water droplets that are as small as practically possible. Steam conversion will be optimal when water droplets appear to be mist suspended in air. This is the principle on which low volume water mist fire extinguishing systems work. It is also the principle upon which high pressure fog fire pumps were sold to the fire service in the 1960s and 1970s. These pumps produced powerful cones of water fog at pressures up to 1000 PSI or 7000 kilopascals. They had enormous physical power in that they could strip sheet rock off of walls, peel shingles off of roofs, and perform other destructive feats. However, their downside was they were flowed through a booster hose. That had flow rates of only 8 to 12 gallons per minute, which is 32 to 48 liters per minute. When high pressure fog would convert quickly to steam exposed to a heated atmosphere, this low volume of water often has insufficient ability to absorb all the heat of a fire. It left firefighters in the potentially dangerous situation of not having enough water to extinguish the fire. The firefighter's goal to apply a fog stream that breaks the water into the finest droplets possible will vary depending on the required reach of the stream, wind conditions that are being faced, available nozzle pressure, and the size and volume of the fire itself. The advantages are that fog streams dissipate heat by exposing the maximum water surface for heat absorption. They also have adjustable stream patterns that may be changed to suit the situation. The stream may vary from a straight stream and be similar to a solid stream 
up to a wide fog pattern that approaches a 90, 90 degree discharge angle to the nozzle. The advantages are that some nozzles have adjustable settings to control the amount of water being used and wide angle fog streams can be used to provide a protective barrier for firefighters that are exposed to high levels of confected or radiated heat. They also can be used to aid ventilation by creating air movement out of a building opening. That's called hydraulic ventilation. They also can be applied to exposures in a gentle enough form to prevent physical damage to the structure itself. They typically will not conduct electricity back to the nozzle and therefore are relatively safe to use around energized electrical equipment, relatively. Both Class A and Class B foam concentrates can be used with fog streams in addition. Some disadvantages of fog streams. They do not have the reach or penetrating power of a solid stream. They are more susceptible than solid streams to wind currents and sometimes may contribute to fire spread, creating heat inversion. And this can cause steam berms to firefighters when they're not properly used during an interior attack. Review questions. What is the difference between a solid stream and a straight stream? That's on page 239 of your text. Next question. What happens to a fog stream's forward velocity when it strikes an obstacle? That's on page 240 of your text. Next question. Why are fog streams most useful for fighting enclosed fires? That is on page 241 of your manual. Learning objective three. We will describe the characteristics of broken streams. Streams of water that have been divided into coarse drops is considered a broken stream. And these are characteristics of solid and fog streams. Most broken stream nozzles direct the water from the hose through a series of small holes in the end or sides of the nozzle. This results in a series of small solid streams that quickly break up into large droplets of water. Broken streams absorb more heat per gallon or liter than a solid stream and have greater reach and penetration than a fog stream. So there's a nice go between. The fog stream has a definite pattern, is composed of small droplets. Usually it's adjustable. And a broken stream, does, however, does not always have a definite pattern. It is usually composed of larger drops and is generally not adjustable. Broken streams may have sufficient continuity to conduct electricity, so its use around Class C fires is not recommended. When broken stream nozzles are used, water damage is secondary to extinguishing the fire. Use is typically limited for a broken stream to special situations such as fighting fires in confined or otherwise inaccessible spaces. Broken streams are produced by special nozzles such as attic or cellar nozzles, piercing nozzles, and chimney nozzles. The advantages of broken stream are that they're often the only means of effectively applying water to fires in other otherwise inaccessible spaces and broken streams have more heat absorbing capabilities than a solid stream. The disadvantages are that they may conduct electricity and should not be used around energized electrical equipment. The method of water application may not be optimal and can produce more water damage than other types of streams. Each nozzle typically has only one specific application and may not have any other uses. Review questions. Why should firefighters avoid using broken stream tactics when fighting Class C fires? That's on page 245, I'm sorry, 244 of your manual. Next question, list three of the special nozzles that are used to produce broken streams. That's on page 245 of your manual also. Thank you as always for your attention. If you need further explanation or any other assistance, be sure to contact your instructor. This chapter is pretty straightforward. But as always, do contact your instructor if you have any questions, and we will meet again for Chapter 11.